He's crazy like Jack Bauer. His name is Forrest Power. Good morning, good afternoon, or oh, good evening, YouTube. Once again, we're playing a bit of jungle. This time, the game mode is Domination, and I'm using my trusty friend, the Silent Galil. Um, I will say, just before I shortly stop talking about the gameplay, that there is a bit of a lull towards the beginning of this game, but as it journeys onwards, it gets quite a bit more exciting, and that's the reason, really, that I posted it. So, just bear with it for the first two, three minutes, and watch the madness unfold later on. But, uh, yeah, what I want to talk to you guys today about is something that we were born with, but not enough of us use. And, if you've had a good look at the title of this video, you probably guessed it by now. Yes, it is, Imagination. And so, it's been said that imagination is a gift. It's a gift from the gods. It's a gift from the heavens. And you could argue that the greatest people ever to live have all had to use their imagination at some point. I mean, you think about people like Albert Einstein. He had to think outside the box and use his imagination to come up with all the theories that he did. And even people like Julius Caesar... Now you might think Julius Caesar, how did he show imagination? Well, you know, in order to invade other countries and show ambition, you've got to actually have that imagination about you in the first place to, you know, see it come to life before it actually does. And Einstein came up with a fantastic quote himself whereby he said that logic will take you from A to B, but imagination will take you anywhere. And I think the point that he's trying to make with that is that if you're sort of relaxed in your life and you're sort of set in your ways and you can't see outside that box, you're never going to achieve your dreams, you're never going to achieve your ambitions. And to do anything worthwhile with your life, you've got to learn to tap into this imagination, which can be a pretty hard thing for some people to do. I know some people do find it easier than others to use their imagination, but I think that, you know, it's something that can easily be learned. I mean, if you think about it, three quarters of our day is spent up by using imagination. You think of all that thinking time that you've got to yourself, and it's a huge chunk of your day. So we're all actively using our imagination, even though it might be on a subconscious level, but I think sometimes, if we're sort of thinking about it a bit more logically, we can actually use it more to our benefit, and you know we can use it to hit these aspirations and hit these ambitions, and hopefully achieve our dreams somewhere down the line. But what's startling from my point of view is that I go into school every day and I have to mark work that's completely devoid of imagination. And I just don't understand why kids these days don't have the same imagination as kids did in sort of generations gone by. And having thought about this problem for an extended period of time, I think it can be linked to the fact that everything's sort of spoon-fed to kids these days. That's not a criticism of children, by the way. It's just a, a simple fact. I remember back to when I was like four or five. On Christmas morning, we always used to run into my mum and dad's room and they'd have bought us loads and loads of presents. And you know, Christmas was generally a really nice time in our household. But as soon as I got into that room, I started ripping the wrapping paper off my presents. And I'd unwrap my presents, stir at them blankly for about two or three seconds. And then start playing with the wrapping paper and start jumping in and out of cardboard boxes. And that was far more entertaining to me than actually playing with the presents themselves. And my mum and dad would just sit there thinking, why have I wasted all that money when he's jumping in and out of a cardboard box and pretending he's in a submarine by poking holes in the side of it with a pencil and things like that. But, you know, as a kid, I was forced to sort of make the most of my imagination and use it to enjoy myself. I remember once, you know, you'd line up like 40 plastic toy soldiers and pretend they were going to a war with each other. Nowadays, kids have got things like Call of Duty on easy access and they can see the sort of real side of things like soldiers at war and things like that and they've not got to rely as much on their imagination and I think that sort of killed it and certainly I can see the link between that and the sort of deteriorating creativity that kids produce in work these days. And so it's my job, I suppose, to sort of try and nurture this creativity to get people to use their imagination on a wider basis. And so when I'm approaching a piece of creative writing, whether it's with my year 7 class or my year 11 class, I try to sort of baby them through it in a strange sort of way. And in fact, you know, if you're feeling quite creative yourself now, perhaps you could give this a try. So if I ask them to write a piece of descriptive writing about um, a sort of beach scene, 
I'll say to him, okay guys, it's time to close your eyes. Imagine that you're lying on a beach on a warm summer's day. You lean back in your deck chair and slowly you feel the sea tickling at your feet as the tide moves in. The sun above you is smiling down, beaming down on you as the gentle rays are caressing your skin and making the hairs on the end of your arm stand on edge. You look over to the side and you see a collection of palm trees gently swaying on the horizon under the under the dress of the sort of sea breeze rocking gently. And then I'll tell the guys to sort of open their eyes and carry on writing from there and try and get across this mental picture that I've tried to build up in them. Now I know some of you will be sat there thinking, this is all a bit gay for its power. Well, I've got news for you. You know, you've got to use these sort of skills to get anywhere in the world. I mean, it's the same with reading books. I think there's a massive climb in sort of creativity and use of imagination because people simply don't read as much as they used to. And, you know, when you read a book or you even read a newspaper, something as basic as that, you're opening your eyes to sort of new theories and new ideas and you sort of, you go in along a sort of intellectual process that'll, that'll help you become more intelligent and it'll help you with a range of things in your life. I mean, as you sit there now, just ask yourself, when was the last time I read a book? And if it's more than like two months ago, then there's probably something wrong with that. There's a great culture at the moment in our society whereby, you know, school is not cool. And all those people who are seen to be learning, in fact, all those people that are seen to be reading books are sort of associated with being geeks. But what they don't tell you is that everyone's a geek in their own sort of weird little way. You've got people who go to the gym all the time who are absolutely obsessed with the way they look. Is that not just as geeky as sort of wanting to play World of Warcraft all the time? I say so because on both counts you've got people who are obsessed with something to the actual detriment of their, pers of their personality and their person as it were. So people are just connected to different things and it's sort of unfair to discriminate, discriminate against everyone just because you're saying, right, I think reading's geeky. Well, it's not. You know, we all play Call of Duty. What's brought you to my channel today will have been Call of Duty. And there's nothing geeky about that. Just the same as there's nothing particularly geeky about sort of going out clubbing with your mates on a Friday night. It's different strokes for different folks. And the sort of naive, um, narrow-minded people don't seem to grasp that fact. And I know I sound like I'm going on a bit of a crusade here, but this is something I feel really strongly about. People simply don't give things a chance. Whether that's giving a person a chance, or whether that's giving something they've not embraced before a chance. If you've not read a good book, then that's simply, the, the proof is in the pudding there. You've not found a book that's right for you. Just the same as if you don't think you've seen a good film, you've not found a film that's good for you. It's all about sort of tapping into your own personality and sort of matching yourself up against what you do like as a person and what you don't like. And I'm going to stop this rant right here because, you know, at the expense of people thinking I'm a bit of a faggot for saying it. Um, but at the same time, the message I want you guys to take away is that give your imagination a chance, give your creativity a chance, because you never know, it could take you to a weird and wonderful place. Don't discriminate based on what other people say because that will not get you anywhere in life. And I wish people would have sort of told me these sort of things 10 years ago. And, you know, it would have probably changed the person that I am for the better. And so the final thought on the matter is the fact that, you know, there's a lot of young viewers watching these videos that I create. And I just want to say to you guys that there's nothing wrong with being the person that you are. And, you know, use your imagination Use your creativity to sort of enhance your life and take it in the direction that you need to. One final quote on the matter. It's not what you look at that matters, it's what you see. So think about that one. I'm not going to reveal it anymore other than it's not what you look at that matters, it's what you see. So take that as you will, take that away with you, take that into your everyday life. We're coming to the end of this commentary now, which is an 82 and 3 game on Jungle. Um, over the next couple of weeks, I think I'm going to be posting a Duke Nukem gameplay commentary just to let you guys that have not played it have a look at it. 
Uh, let me know whether you like that or don't like it, or just give me some feedback in the comments section below. And, you know, let me know your views on imagination, creativity, and all things wild and wonderful. Anything that I've been talking about in today's commentary, let me know your thoughts on it. Once again, I'm Forest Power Guys, and it's been emotional.